Here they are, everybody. 27 years, and they are still together and still one of the big hits in the music world, Jethro Tull. Real names are uh, Ian Anderson, mm -hmm. of course, and Martin Barr on guitar, and Andrew Giddings on keyboards. And there are two other members who are who will be <laughs> who will be busy tonight on stage again yeah. at the Beacon Theatre. Yeah. Well, we couldn't and, afford the entire group today, yeah. but we're so glad the three of you came. No, the, the other two are the expensive guys yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> we're cheap. So there's nobody named Jethro Tull. Not anymore. No, well, there was once upon a time back yeah. in the 18th century an agriculturalist, an inventor called inventor. Jethro Tull, who. Uh, we ended up being named after. It wasn't my idea. But you had a lot of names before you got to Jethro Tull. Yeah, we were, we were called something different every week. Like what? Well, we were so bad when we started, the only way we could get rebooked into I the blues clubs story. was... Oh, <laughs> shall I tell it to you again? I, well, I just read it in quite a few of the articles about you that... that well, I haven't heard of Tell okay. me. <laughs> and they haven't heard of it either. Uh, yeah. No, we had a different name every week, because yeah. the only way we could get rebooked is to change our name, pretend to be somebody different. <laughs> and That's that, bad, huh? the, the only way we knew who we were was we would arrive at a club and look down the list of names and see if there was a name we didn't recognize, we thought, <laughs> that must be us. I thought it was because you were so rowdy, not so bad. No, we, we, we were just, just plain bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you got the name Jethro Tull, and, and the audience for the first time seemed to really like you, and you got invited back. Yeah, it wasn't because we were called Jethro Tull. It just happened to be the time we got mm. invited Good. to play every week at the famous Marquee Club, which mm. was kind of like the Fillmore East in those days. Mm -hmm. It was the place where everybody started. Mm -hmm. And to sort of put this in historical perspective, at, at this time, the Rolling Stones were looking for a record deal. Mm -hmm. Ringo had just become the Beatles' drummer, so we're going back a ways. Um, but yeah, not quite that far back. But mm -hmm. and you need a new publicist because that's what's been your art. Well, shall we review some of the great classic songs? Now, um, here's the cover song from J. S. Bach, Bori. That's right. We're we're one of the best known bands in the world, never to really have had hits. But we know what you're getting at. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it almost sounds like you heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and you guys at, at times sat down to literally write something you thought would be totally non-commercial, and then it would become a hit, to, yeah, to we, your we're, amazement? We're, or your... We were on our first American tour back in 1969, and our manager said, while we're out of, out of the UK, we've got to have something to keep the pot boiling you know, while we're away from home. So write us a hit. <laughs> okay, yeah, give me, give me a couple of hours. So just to, just to tease him, you know, I, I wrote a, the most uncommercial thing I could think of, which was in 5-4, which isn't really terribly good for dancing to unless you have two and a half legs. <laughs> but it clicked. It certainly, yes. well, it clicked with somebody because they seemed to go Living in the past. Yeah. <laughs> So the flute, was that always your primary instrument, Ian? Um, no, it wasn't. I started off being a very bad guitar player, and uh, which I could demonstrate for you amply <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was a guitar player. But the flute gives the, the whole thing mm. a different sound, you know? That's right. Well, I, I thought it was a good idea to try and do something a little different from everybody else, so mm -hmm. I, I started that when I was uh, 20 years old. Is that right? I took up the flute. Ah. That's too short for me. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it was fun, you know, but it wasn't the kind of thing a blues band did back yeah. then to no, play the flute. And so they still it, don't, actually. Met, met with some disapproval, I think, mm -hmm. in some quarters. But, uh, I, you know, switched back to the guitar sometimes just to amuse myself. Well, he switched back <laughs> now. This was a, a song out of uh, the Red uh, Rock days in Colorado? Uh, yeah, this was the first, when we, when we premiered the, the Thick as a Brick tour back then, our first date was, uh, was actually to a full-scale riot. I mean, there were 11,000 people who were dropping CS gas into the audience from helicopters. The police overreacted just a tad. What were they rioting about? Uh, oh, the fact they couldn't get in, you know, because oh. it was full up. So they, oh, yeah. they, they turned police cars over and set uh -huh. cars. As kids did back yeah, then. Sure. Of course, now they're much better behaved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, things are getting so much better. Yeah, I have, I have two of them. They're much better. People. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, here's a Thick as a Brick. Really don't mind if you sit this one out. My words, but a whisper you 
deafness a shout I may make you feel But I can't make you think Your sperm's in the gutter Your love's in the sink From, you're from Scotland. Do I hear an Irish lilt in there? Or is that Scottish or what is that um, sound? That, you know, <laughs> Uptown Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cheap hotel Uptown Manhattan. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> and basically, I am Scottish originally. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't think a lot of it shows. At least, <laughs> oh, I think not at least above the waist. No. <laughs> no, I wear a sporran. Is what I'm getting at. You know, yeah. the famous uh, container of uh, precious valuables. <laughs> the sporran. You know, we wear it with our kilts, yes. Like a purse. Oh, the sparring, is that one under your kilt? Yeah. He, he thought you were talking dirty. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I, I no, 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 no. The sparring you wear outside the kilt. Oh, outside the kilt. The haggis, the haggis I is thought inside it, the kilt. In America, we call that a jock. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to come right back with Jeff Rocco's new story. That's what I thought. I know that. Oh, right. I think it's just about to get Guests on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee stay at the Michelangelo. Intimate, fashionable, very Italian. The luxury hotel in the heart of Manhattan's business, cultural, and theater district. The Michelangelo. And tomorrow on Live, actor Ken Olin.